China's stringent zero COVID policy has not stopped the spread of the COVID-19 virus, but it has instead shown signs of intensifying. Recently, a new round of outbreaks has resurfaced in many parts of China. From July 1st to 2nd, 109 people tested positive in Wuxi, Jiangsu Province, which was designated as a medium and high-risk area, and the city of Wuxi was closed down. Wuxi Leather District was immediately closed due to the discovery of infected people, followed by the arrival of a large number of epidemic prevention personnel. More than 100 buses were dispatched, and all the businesses and nearby households, totaling more than 6,000 people, were taken away and quarantined. Due to the large number of people, some of them who were in the transfer waiting area were not able to eat or drink for an entire day, and could not even go to the washroom during the transfer. The entire maternity ward of Wuxi People's Hospital was relocated to the mobile cabin hospital, including all doctors, nurses. Newborns and pregnant women awaiting delivery. According to reports by local residents, Wuxi has been normalizing nucleic acid testing before, but was stopped in mid-May. Now, due to the sudden outbreak of the epidemic again, nucleic acid testing has been carried out every day since June 29th, and since June 30th, Wuxi began to pull people out for quarantine and seal off entire communities. Someone left a message on the internet saying. As soon as the lockdown was lifted, there is an epidemic. Once there is an epidemic, there can only be another lockdown. This is the price of zero COVID policy, again and again, over and over. On July 2nd, Shuzhou, Jiangsu Province, was sealed off due to the sudden outbreak of COVID-19, and the authorities asked all residents to not leave Shuzhou unless necessary. A couple in Shuzhou got married on that very day, and the groom came to pick up his bride in her neighborhood, not realizing that the bride's neighborhood has been temporarily sealed off due to the epidemic, and that a cordon had been put up at the entrance to prevent access. The groom could only complete the wedding ceremony through the cordon, but fortunately, the groom was able to pick up his bride in the end. In addition, Nanjing, Yancheng, Huai'an, Suzhou, and other major cities in Jiangsu Province have all had an outbreak. The epidemic has spread in half of Jiangsu Province. It is reported that the outbreak in Jiangsu Province was spread by working people from Si County of Anhui Province, and then it spread further. On June thirtieth, there were nine new confirmed cases of the virus in Si County and ninety-five cases of asymptomatic infection. The virus has spread to other surrounding counties and cities. In addition, Zhejiang has also experienced an outbreak in recent days. It has been found that the new outbreaks in Anhui, Zhejiang, and Jiangsu are all close to Shanghai. Shanghai announced on June first that it had achieved a milestone victory in the fight against the epidemic, with most residential area lockdowns being lifted. But the epidemic has not been completely cleared up in Shanghai. And not only are some communities still under lockdown, but new neighborhoods have also been closed again recently. In the early hours of July 1st, a positive case was reported on Yanji West Road in Yangpu District, Shanghai, and all the people went through nucleic acid testing overnight. On July 2nd, a community on Xizang North Road in Shanghai was finally released after being blocked off for four months. The residents came out in a trance, as if they had come to another world. Although Shanghai announced the lift on the lockdown, some prevention measures continue to be enforced. For example, Shanghai requires that restaurants cannot serve food in the dining room, so many people have to sit at the entrance of the restaurant or on the stairs to eat. Most places in China now require people to scan health codes, venue codes, nucleic acid codes, etc. To enter or leave public places, which also makes people feel very overwhelmed. One 90-year-old woman in Shanghai wanted to buy two yuan of noodles to make a bowl of longevity noodles for her birthday. 
Since she did not have a cell phone, she could not scan the code. So the salesperson said she could not sell it to her. The passersby wanted to buy it for her, but her nucleic acid testing was only valid for three days, so she couldn't buy it either. In the end, the old woman did not get the noodles and left disappointed. In Shenzhen, Guangdong Province, the number of cases increased for several days. Futian and Luohu districts issued emergency notices, setting up epidemic control and prevention zones. A large number of residents were taken away and quarantined, and many communities were sealed off. And a large number of police and security guards were dispatched to the scene. A wave of exodus began for the workers in Shenzhen. <laughs> On June 30th, in Shangmeilin New Village, Shenzhen, due to the lockdown, the owners could only sell takeouts, and the food delivery people picked them up. In addition, there are also COVID-19 outbreaks in Qingdao and Xi'an. On July 2nd, Chang'an District in Xi'an also began to close down the community overnight. On July 3rd. A case of COVID-19 was found in Xiapu County, Fujian Province, and the county immediately designated seven high-risk areas and began traffic control, followed by a new round of nucleic acid testing. China's strict epidemic prevention policy has not resulted in zero outbreaks, but has instead created many human tragedies. A 93-year-old man in Dandong, Liaoning Province. Had a hernia attack and asked to leave his neighborhood for medical treatment. The community refused, suspecting that he was pretending to be sick. In desperation, the elderly man had to take off his pants to prove that he was indeed sick. The community then called the police and said the old man was acting like a pervert. He was taken to the police station in handcuffs and had his teeth knocked out. The old man was so humiliated that he ended his own life. The incident triggered a wave of criticism from netizens. What appears to be a strict vaccination policy is actually a ridiculous fiasco. On July 2nd, a citizen of Dandong made a video complaint that some communities asked each household to send one person to quarantine for seven days, regardless of whether they were infected or were close contact. Another local resident said that his father was not feeling well to go to quarantine, so he offered to go instead of his father, and the community approved. Turns out, this so-called epidemic prevention is simply a formality. In Shenyang, it was reported that a positive case was found in Unit One of a building in Jinxiu Huacheng, Shenyang City, and the whole unit was pulled out and isolated. After returning from isolation, people asked each other who was positive. It turned out that the positive case was from Unit Two, and it was even funnier that the patient actually recovered pretty quickly at home without having to go to isolation. There was also a small area where the medical staff forgot to take away the samples after doing nucleic acid sampling. Although officials around the country are only going through the formalities of zero COVID policy and epidemic preventions, the impact on the economy and people's livelihood is real. Some foreigners working in Shanghai have come back from the mobile cabin hospital after isolation, but because they had COVID-19, the factories did not accept them, so they had to live on the streets. Because of the epidemic, a shoe store in Shanghai can't continue to operate. 
and the helpless owner set up a stall to dispose of the shoes in stock. Once a major manufacturing center in China, the factories in Dongguan, Guangdong Province are now empty. Shenzhen's Shajing Street office and factories in the industrial area have closed down and moved away. Many tenants in Huaqiang North of Shenzhen, China's number one electronic street, said they are ready to terminate their leases and close their stores. China has entered an era of low income and high unemployment due to the economic recession. According to a recent speech by Li Kongyue, a professor at the School of Management of Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou, China, up to 940 million people in China earn less than 2,000 yuan per month. Forty percent of the population, or 596 million people, have a monthly salary of less than 1,000 yuan. While the poorest in China, the bottom 20 percent, or 280 million people, have a per capita disposable income of 7,800 yuan per year and 600 yuan per month. More than 800 million people are in debt, and more than 200 million people are unemployed. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang instructed the Ministry of Civil Affairs on June 27 that the number of people in need has increased due to epidemics and disasters, and asked the Ministry of Civil Affairs to strengthen dynamic monitoring, expand assistance, promote employment, and prevent things that affect the moral bottom line to ensure that there is no return to poverty on a large scale. In 2020, Li Keqiang mentioned that there are 600 million people in China with a monthly income of only 1,000 yuan. Young people in China are even more hopeless. According to official data released on June 15, the unemployment rate for young people aged 16 to 24 reached 18.4% in May three times the national urban unemployment rate in China and far higher than the 7.9% rate for the same group in the United States, setting a record for the highest unemployment rate for young people since the government began releasing the data in 2018. On July 4, Tsai Xin revealed the misery in China's production hubs of Shenzhen and Dongguan. Summer used to be the peak hiring season for flat-rate workers in the Pearl River Delta region, However, this year, the recruitment situation is so miserable that the hourly wage for a part-time job is 9 to 10 yuan, or about 1.35 US dollars. An employee of an enterprise in Dongcheng of Dongguan said that last year, they tried to recruit as many student workers as possible, and the hourly rate was 14 yuan. But this year, there were no orders in the factory, so none of them were recruited. Even those who have jobs face declining pay. In the most economically developed coastal areas such as Shanghai, Guangdong, Jiangsu, and Zhejiang, it has been recently reported that civil servants have experienced salary cuts one after another. All localities have cancelled various incentive subsidies, and the salary of civil servants has been reduced by about 30%. Recently, doctors at the Zhaotong Mental Health Center in Yunnan province disclosed that they were pressured by their superiors for night shift fees and performance pay recovery over the past five years, totaling more than 10 million yuan. The authorities responded that the fee was illegally issued and therefore needs to be recovered. Shandong Yantai Development Zone will not only significantly reduce teachers' wages, but also recover 50,000 to 150,000 yuan previously issued, triggering teachers to strike in protest. Affected by this, there are also a large number of migrant workers. Their unemployment will not be counted in the scope of the unemployment rate. The Central Propaganda Department recently claimed that there has been a wave of people returning home to start businesses in rural China, with 11.12 million people returning to their hometowns to start businesses. In fact, everyone understands that the so-called returning home to start a business is nothing more than propaganda by the CCP. The actual situation is that there are no jobs in the city, and the cost of living in the city is higher than that in the countryside so they can only return to their hometown to maintain a living. 
It is obvious that the zero COVID policy and prevention measures caused heavy damages to the economy and people's livelihoods. Yet the CCP authorities blindly insist on this approach. Tai Chi, secretary of the Beijing Municipal Party Committee, even shouted the slogan, "In the next five years, we will continue to do a good job in normalizing epidemic prevention and control." In a recent speech, which makes people lose even more hope for the future. Although some have pointed out that this is a campaign for Xi Jinping's re-election this year, it is indeed sad to gamble on the suffering of 1.4 billion Chinese people in exchange for Xi Jinping's third term.